cobblestones. Some are round, gray, and dull. Others are sharp, smooth, and brilliant. This one may be Victorian and just a little bit radical. As we arrive at Mark Wheatley's table, he's drawing one of his characters. The award-winning graphic novelist is known for his independent work, but also for bringing back to the page old favorites such as Doctor Who, Tarzan, The Flash, and even The Three Stooges. More recently, he's been designing for TV, working on such shows as Two Broke Girls and The Millers. He came to AwesomeCon in Washington, D.C. to introduce a new character, Dr. Cthulhu. But his work doesn't start with a pencil. It starts with the library. When I'm even doing a period piece like my Lone Justice graphic novel was set in the 1930s, I watched a lot of news footage of people moving at that time because body language was different then. We weren't as self-conscious about how we held ourselves in public. But now because we see ourselves on every security camera and our home video all the time, we're very aware of how we appear in a photograph or on video. And so we tend to dress it up a bit. But people back then were far freer with their gestures. And so it's, it, every era has its own look and style. Well, that's very interesting because I don't know that a lot of people think about the homework that might go into writing a graphic novel or a comic book. Is there a lot of research before pen goes to paper? Absolutely. Uh, Dr. Cthulhu started for me almost three years ago, and we're announcing it this weekend. So it's been three years of development work, designs that were tossed out and then redesigned and done a cover for the proposed book now five times, and I'll probably do it a few more before we finally get to press. Is it that it takes a long time to satisfy yourself artistically, or is it because there are so many in the industry these days whose job is to always say no? When you start something, you have a world of infinite possibilities. It's never existed before. It could be anything. And that's a problem because you can't aim anywhere. You can't narrow it down. And it becomes a process of narrowing it down as you make choices. If you decide it's going to be set at a certain period, then you know you have to do research for costumes, which means that if you had it initially designed to look a little different, those are out the window now because the costumes are different. People's attitudes change depending on periods. If you introduce a character who's really irreverent and you have a very serious character and they play off each other well, suddenly you realize, well, I'm writing now about two characters and not just a main character. And so you go back and change what came before. So it's a, it's a process of adjusting to your latest great idea. <laughs> Which takes us to when you're working on someone else's great idea, when you're adapting or continuing the evolution of a character. How much freedom do you have versus how much is a character locked down? How far can you stretch a character that's already part of someone else's mythology? Well, the simple answer is you can do it as far as they'll let you. Um, ultimately, they are the owner of that property, and it's up to them to make that decision. And you get the full gamut. Sometimes they'll come to you and say, well, I did the Black Hood years ago. And when they came to me, they said, we have a name. You can do anything you want. And so I completely reinvented the character from scratch. Um, but I've also been brought in on things where they say, you know, the artist who was working on this is dead. We need you to draw like him. <laughs> So, I mean, it can be as restrictive as that, but it can be as wide open as being starting from scratch. One thing I always imagine is a little difficult in coming to an author event or a convention is, in some respects, you're there to sell your last work, which isn't the work that you are most excited about. So I'm going to end asking you about both. What are you here to promote and what are you working now, which is just the thing that is making you dance in your seat? Well, um, I, it's been interesting. For the last five years, I've done most of my work for television. So when I come to these events, I've had less and less print work to show. Um, I'm very excited to be working on the Doctor Who comic books. I'm very excited to be working on the Stargate Atlantis comic books and also the Three Stooges comics. Um, those are all very tightly controlled by the rights holders. And so I'm fitting into their world. The thing I'm really excited about is Dr. Cthulhu, which is my new book that I'm announcing here at the show. And it's an H.P. Lovecraft-inspired series set in a steampunk environment. And we get to deal with monsters and pretty girls and guys wearing really fancy Victorian outfits and goggles. And 
they travel the universe in the trans-dimensional bathysphere, and it's an infinite world of possibilities, and I always love those kind of scenarios. Thank you for your time. You're very welcome. Marking the page for Cobblestones, I'm Andrew Hiller. To find out more about the works of Mark Wheatley, you can go to the Mark Wheatley Gallery online, or perhaps to your local comic book shop. To watch or listen to more Cobblestone segments, navigate your way to cobblestonepath.org or andrewhiller.net. And for fantasy readers, you may just want to check out my latest, A Halo of Mushrooms, available on Amazon and elsewhere. Thank you.